Okay. Uh, we've got already two guests uh, from uh, uh, the Netherlands. With your permission, I am now changing to English to honor our two guests from Europe. I'm delighted to open our first session of Herlitz Day, National Archives and their significance. As we all know, National Archives fulfill an important role in preserving governance, records, and activities, but also activities, process, processes, and uh, ideas held by general public. There are quite a few differences in approaches between National Archives on the role, significance, and purposes they fulfill in each state, the vision, as well as on issues such as their public status, transparency, accessibility of archival materials, original or digital, and accessibility for users. And these are some of the issues we would like to hear in this session. Our first guest is Mr. Tom Desmet, Director of Archive Services and Innovations at the National Archives of the Netherlands. Mr. Desmet told me that the Dutch National Archive is currently rephrasing its vision and mission statements. So, I, so our invitation came at a good time. I hope to hear some of the new ideas our colleagues in the Netherlands have. After the end of the lecture, we will have some time uh, to question and answers from the audience. Mr. De Smet, the stage is all yours. Uh, just unmute yourself. Do you see? Okay. Y you're muted. Unmuting now. Okay, okay. now we hear you. So Good. Sorry. Thank you so much. I hope you can all see me. I don't see you, so uh, I would have loved to be, um, I would have loved to join you all in Jerusalem for the Herlet seminar today. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and as um, I was introduced, we are currently working on new vision and mission statements. It's still work in progress, so I'm just sharing with you where we are now. Um, before I do, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, this is a pre Corona picture. I'm a lot more gray now, but um, uh, since uh, October last year, I became director of archive services and innovation at the National Archives of the Netherlands. And before I go back to that, maybe it's good for you to um, give a little background on the situation of the National Archives uh, in the Netherlands. I think that will put into perspective uh, this into perspective this lecture a little bit more for you. So what the Dutch context uh, for the National Archive is that we are part of the Ministry of Education, Culture and Science. We're a so-called agency um, and we execute the Public Records Act. That's the legal framework where we work in. Um, the Algemene Rijksarchivaris or National Archivist is the head of the National Archive and also primary advisor of the Minister of Education, Culture and Science when it comes to public records. Uh, myself, I'm the co-director uh, and at the same time chief information officer of the National Archives, as well as a counterpart of the chief information officer of the central government. In, in Holland, the governmental organizations such as ministries or other agencies um, within the public service domain, they are responsible for their own information management and governance. Um, that is, um, the State Records Act, or the Public Records Act, states that after 10, or act currently it states that after 20 years, selected archives are transferred to the National Archives. Um, a, new, a new law is in the making, and that will change it from 20 to 10 years which if you ask me is still not enough, but it's an improvement on the 20 years. But that's basically our legal role. On top of that, we have a system responsibility for archives within the Netherlands, archives um, of decentral, uh, decentralized government, uh, such as um, uh, local authorities, provinces, uh, and so on, or courts. Uh, they also have hold archives, and um, as a national archive, we have a responsibility. And on top of that, being part of the Ministry of uh, Culture, we are also um, actively encouraged, and it's actually part of our role, 
to uh, organize public outreach activities, which in essence makes us a, um, a heritage institution on top of that. So this is just to give you a small idea of where we are at, at the Netherlands. So this uh, is more the legal framework. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask me at the end of the presentation. Back to me, um, I'm a neuropsychologist um, that's become an archivist. And when I, and, well, I feel an archivist at heart. And at first I noticed quite a bit of prejudice. People thought, well, you're working in cultural, uh, you're working in the cultural sector. I was museum director for a while. Um, so why the archives? And it's, I will get back to that later. And I think it's actually transferred to a certain extent to the mission and vision statement that we are currently preparing with the National Archives. Um, I know I found a lot of prejudice, but I actually found um, the archivist to me is someone who's in the middle of the digital information landscapes or information information um, world that we're currently living in. And uh, I think we should be much more aware of that. It's actually one of the most exciting things that you can work on and work in. Uh, but a lot of people haven't realized that. What I also found is that um, when you try to explain that archivists are not just about packing boxes or dusty, you know, um, Dusty, dusty, dusty parts. It's not all about that. It's we've gone, we've all gone digital, of course. I mean, that's that's nothing new. Um, but, but I also found that um, among archivists, a lot of these solutions were um, a lot, of, a lot of solutions were were actually found in. They thought a lot of solutions to the problems of archives that we are facing are uh, resolved by going digital, but. Um, I do think that a modern archive and a modern archivist has, and also a modern national archive, uh, it doesn't only equal digital. Digital is an important aspect of it, but it's definitely not all of it. Let me explain. The playing field we're at has changed dramatically from, say, 10, 20 years, maybe, say, 15 years ago. Um, and, of course, we can go into that analysis for days, so I'll just highlight a few things that pop to mind and are relevant to the rest of the conversation here as well. First of all, I mean, this is nothing new, there's the explosion of information. There's a never-ending explosion of information. Even governments have never worked with this much information reports, analysis uh, before. Um, it's all complicated a lot. A lot of that has to be selected, archived. A lot of it doesn't get archived and it's just exploding. That's the way governments work. I think that's a positive information, but it's just something that we need to take into account. Another big thing is the expectations of citizens, uh, but also civil servants are citizens themselves. And we've become so used to Google uh, or other really good search engines, and we want information we want all the information that's out there. We want it now, and we want to find it really easily. That's an expectation that we as National Archives have to actually, we have to try to match that, but we don't have the resources of the likes of Google and other big tech giants. So that's quite a challenge. The information that, um, the explosion of information also has raised a lot of concerns, for example, concerns of privacy. Uh, especially with the uh, the GDPR, the, uh, um, the the protection of uh, personal records uh, act in 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 the European Union, has caused quite a bit of concern and has actually limited access. Uh, uh, you can always question if that access was limited on the grounds of the Privacy Act or not. But the result is that people have become very careful, and um, it's limiting access a lot and it's actually causing a lot of problems even to um, provide access to historical records uh, as well as current records. Political pressure, um, which is something that I will get back to in the Dutch context, is um, 
governments and especially uh, the political part, like the uh, members of parliament, they are expecting governments, both local and centralized governments, like national governments, to be increasingly uh, transparent towards them, to provide them with the information of how decision-making came to place, and so on. This is something that is growing, it's something that's expected. It actually is, I think it's a, it comes, it comes from the expectation of, of all citizens that we want information now and we want it, um, we want it all. And politicians are no different. And to a certain extent, that's a very important and um, positive uh, change, but it's quite a challenge. It poses quite a challenge for us as archives. And then there is a societal change, um, which has been um, which has been in place for quite a number of years, and I think a lot of political powers have were actually quite blind to it. But it is there. There is a question of trust, or I should say, distrust. Um, the day that authorities, be it governments, but also doctors or scientists were trusted almost blindly by citizens, those days are over. People Google things, people come up, they find communities to challenge things that were once just accepted as truths. Uh, and that distrust is not only a challenge to archives, but it is a big challenge to governments and democracies in general. I think this is, this is, this is a very important um, thing that's changed in the last couple of years, and people have become very vocal about it. Vocal citizens are definitely a positive change, but it's something that we need to, as governments, because national archives are part of government, that we need to um, we need to take into account the level playing field that archives are working in. Those the challenges that it poses are exactly the same challenges that governments in general must also deal with. And governments, uh, governmental organizations, I should say, uh, deal with that in the way that they've sort of always worked. And they, always, they have good solutions because what they do is they make good policies. That's the core of what governmental organizations do, ministries do, and that's that's definitely part of the solution to deal with these challenges. They've also um, caught on to use technology, technology to publish information, to make it more accessible. Uh, and of course, they're talking about accountability. So governments, a combination that looks like a perfect package, you can deal with these challenges with good policy, embracing technology, and embracing accountability towards citizens to counteract all of these movements. That's something that's a very good solution. But in the Netherlands, we've had quite a few instances where the idea of good policies and technology, which I sometimes refer to as digital optimism, or optimism they're actually insufficient to achieve that accountability that we want as governments. Governments do not exist just, I mean, they exist for citizens. They are, we are there for citizens. We are not there for ourselves, we're there for citizens. So that to achieve that accountability, good policy and technology have not always been sufficient. On top of that, and this is a very Dutch context, there have been substantial government cuts on information management professionals and information management and information professionals within the organizations. That is also part of the tech optimism. They thought, well, you know, we are, we're, we're producing a lot of information, but all that information is going to be sold by a good uh, data management system or content management system. We, we, we work in clouds. I mean, we'll get there. So we don't need all these people who are basically the archivists within the organizations. So there's been substantial, substantial government cuts. And also there's been a culture of um, interpreting accountability as something that um, civil servants, uh, it, it's focused too much on civil servants, okay? It's how can we protect ourselves 
and our decision making processes from being in the limelight with citizens or press. So it was a very defensive culture. So, okay, we need to be accountable, but that's only just to justify the way we work. So there was no idea of accountability of this is what we do because we need to be transparent as a government towards citizens. This is actually something that I've noticed and I've only been uh, part of the uh, public service since October, but it's something that I've really noticed. And it's, 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 it, I think it's, it's really quite challenging as an archive to work with governments where the focus is very on, we have to be defensive about the way we act and that's how we organize our information for our own processes and also to justify what we do. And I do think that's a wrong take on things. And it's actually, um, and this is quite an important context, in Holland, this has resulted, what I've just shown, in what we call the tax authority gate. Uh, just to, I can understand that you've not all heard about it, but it's basically um, in the Netherlands, as in many other modern democracies, citizens with low income get compensated by the tax authorities for daycare. On, at the same time, all governments want to combat fraud. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but what, what happened in the Netherlands is that um, policy and tech optimism had basically, they designed algorithms based on policies to show, um, to, to, to basically, um, to establish who um, could get compensation and who couldn't. So suddenly people became suspects of fraud based on policy-based algorithms, all the policies in themselves were perfect, but the algorithms just didn't quite work. So as a consequence, tens of thousands of people were put on a blacklist and they were falsely tagged as swindlers criminals. This, and this happened and these people suddenly couldn't get access to certain services, uh, they got extra questions, they had to repay huge amounts of money. And many of them, as these were already very vulnerable citizens, actually uh, went bankrupt and therefore faced even bigger problems. Um, of course, this raised a lot of questions. People went to press, people were like, what's going on? They couldn't get the information they were entitled to. They were constantly said like, no, this is your under investigation, we can't show this. And, they were basically going from one department to the next. Um, the parliament started to ask questions, but they remained completely in the dark because governmental organizations and the tax authorities on top of that, they could just simply not provide the information. They could not explain how these people were singled out, how decision-making went. Uh, and um, on top of that, the culture of, okay, we can't show uh, what we have said, we can't, we can't show this decision. It basically, everyone remained in the dark, it became a big scandal and the Dutch administration had to, had to resign under political pressure. The settlement with these parents is, uh, is still going on, it's still ongoing, and uh, it's actually caused a huge um, investigation on what caused this. And basically, the conclusion was that we have an information management, the information management and the information uh, governance within governmental organizations has zero transparency. Not because it's all ill will, it's also because the, the information is all over the place. People don't organize their information or, or, or civil servants and the organizations they work in, they don't organize information with the idea of being transparent towards citizens or try or even being or being able to explain why certain decisions were made. And this brings me back to the archive. This is what happened. And um, this raised a lot of concerns like how can we actually change that? And uh, I will, of course, there was a big response from government to this scandal, but it also caused a lot of stir within the archives in the Netherlands, and especially also the National Archives, where we actually came to think, 
could the archive come to the rescue? Because if you think about it, our National Archives and archives in general were basically the epitome of transparency. Um, our missions always have somewhere that we ensure the citizens' rights to get access to public information at all times, now, but also in the future. There's even constitutional laws in the Netherlands that decree that citizens' rights. And that's exactly, that's exactly what we do as National Archives. And that access to public information is pivotal for a transparent government. If you, can't, if you can't be accountable for what you do, if you can't show how decision-making came about, if you can't explain why certain policies, certain policies are in place, people lose trust in governments. And that's actually really detrimental to the trust in governments, but also a trust in the democracy. So I do believe that we should be more vocal about the contribution that archives make to a democracy. In the same way, and I like to, because I worked in a museum that focused on press freedom, free press and qualitative journalism is is in, is, is, in, is in essence uh, the same cornerstone that archives can be in a democracy because we translate information to citizens about how governments work. Of course, got, journalists do that via media. We do it via our reading rooms or our websites and so on. But in the same way, we contribute to a healthy democracy. So what we, um, when uh, the National Archivist and I started in uh, October, we started together on exactly the same day, which was very interesting because the National Archives have two directors and we started on the same day. So we could actually, uh, and we had very similar ideas of what National Archives should do. But we've also, we also encountered a, uh, an institution that, did tremendous work, had incredible knowledge, but had some, somehow got distant from its main stakeholders. And so we have said, like, our mission statement will never change. We will always be there to ensure citizens' rights to public information. That, that will always be the core of our mission. But the playing field has changed so much that we need to do it in a different way. And instead of spending 15 you know, sessions of coming up with four very beautiful sentences that everyone will forget five months later, uh, we just thought, let's, let's just basically um, uh, um, summarize this whole movement in one word, and that one word is closer. It may sound very stupid or commonsensical, but if you think of it, it's really the essence of what we as a National Archive should be doing, especially in the Dutch context. So what we do is we move closer towards citizens by, and by being more inclusive, by uh, everything we do, we do because we think that the role of the National Archives or archives in general is it, all about transparency towards citizens. Transparency, that's also a good notion, is doesn't necessarily mean that everything should be published or should be public, because that's not possible. Transparency is also about being able to explain and being willing to explain why certain information is not accessible. That's also transparency. That's something that that, that notion has very often been forgotten, it's like that governments can't really explain why certain information is secret. They just say, no, you can't access it. And we believe that part of transparency is being able to explain that, and national archives do have an important role in that too. Another movement, this, the, the first movement I just mentioned, is moving closer towards citizens, is basically on top of that pyramid. That's basically, it's the core of our mission. And Enabled in order to be relevant in 10 years' time, we have to move closer towards citizens in every single way. 
by our websites, by our content, by the way we, uh, we, we, we put content out there, the way we explain things to people. We don't, archives don't work the same way people think. If you do a lot of research in archives, I'm sure you will find your way, but for people, archives are very, very, um, almost, yeah, impossible fortresses to take on because they don't really understand our jargon. They don't really know the way we work. Um, the archival science is not really how people look through information anymore. So we need to move closer to that. But also as national archives, we need to be aware and also because in the Netherlands, we have a system responsibility towards the archives that um, work, uh, that work for um, local governments or provinces. Uh, we need to move closer towards them too, because if we want to be closer to citizens and give them the right to access information, um, to public information, that's not only public information that comes from national or central governments. A lot of people, uh, um, a lot of people get in touch with governments on a local level. So if we want to provide the full picture of how decision-making laws or certain decisions come about, we need to work together with these archives to actually extend the access that we can provide as national archives and translate them to local content to make it easy to search and find. And also as a national archive, we have more means than local archives to tackle the challenges that we mentioned earlier uh, when it comes to innovation, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to designing tools or uh, gaining new knowledge. That's something that we have more budget for than the smaller archives or the decentralized archives in the Netherlands. So we will help them to tackle those challenges, and we will closely together as equal partners because there had been a bit of a divide like national archives uh, out there and then the local archives, they're just doing their thing. That's something that we really want to counter because we think if we want to provide public information, we need to work together with these archives and we should also be able to present the public information in a much more coherent way. Another movement is we actually have to move closer towards governments, which may sound a bit weird because we are also part of the government, but we're an agency that has a certain degree of autonomy. Um, and we need to move closer towards governments to help them to ensure that citizens get sustainable access to information. We only come into play after 10 or 20 years after the information was actually the information came about, but governments have very often cut all the information professionals out of their organizational pretty much, uh, relying on proprietary um, uh, systems and technology that they can't really change anymore and that are not focused on providing access to citizens. So it's, they're focused on organizing the own work processes within those governmental organizations. So we need to move closer as a national, as a national archive, closer to these governments to become, in effect, their partners in transparency. We want to say partners in crime, but that sounds a bit negative. And also as the essence of national archives of archives is to really contribute to transparent governments. We thought it'd be nice to say that we are partners in transparency. This is quite a big operation, as you can imagine, because moving to closer towards government means that we take on quite a different role. Um, in, um, after the investigation of the authority, uh, the tax authority gate that I just explained, um, government uh, said, okay, we have to improve our information management, because basically it all came down to that. Um, and they said, okay, we will provide 800 million euro in the next five years for the government, the central government, so the national government as a whole, to improve the information management and information uh, access to citizens, but also to parliament. It took quite a bit of um, 
effort for uh, the National Archives in the Netherlands to be part of that operation because people didn't really think, governments didn't really think of us as a party that could actually help them to improve their information management. Uh, because they said that you only come at the end of the line after 10 or 10, 20 years, we give you our boxes and then you take care of it. But they didn't really realize that all the knowledge that we have is pivotal at the front of that information chain. And uh, we managed to squeeze out 17.5 million for the next five years um, to actually um, accelerate and, 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 and sort of um, extend our services towards governments to move closer towards them. That was, um, we're very happy about that. And you may say, okay, 17.5 out of 800 is nothing. But I do want to remind you that in the Netherlands, governments, governmental organizations, ministries are in first place responsible for their own information management. And of course, as a national archive, we don't know what's in there. So a lot of work will still need to be done within those uh, uh, governmental organizations and ministries to actually improve their information management. So what kind of role can we as a national archive take on within that big operation? I mean, we've all, as an, as an, as an archival field, we've all worked for, a, we've all talked for a long time about um, we need to be at the front, uh, but it's easier said than done. And then we've, we've come up with beautiful uh, buzzwords like archiving by design, because it means that information, uh, basically archiving starts the very moment when information is created. So even when you organize a content management system, we should, also, we should already sort of look and advise on how that information can be managed, how that content management system should be um, uh, should be configured um, because that is the only guarantee that we we'll get to provide sustainable access to information. Um, so that's something that we will be more advising on the information management and architecture, and we will even be providing extra support. There was a lot of resistance within the organization, but also within the Ministry of Science, uh, Ministry of uh, Education, Culture and Science, which is which is the ministry we are part of at the National Archive, because they said, well, if you provide support, you will actually assume responsibility in their information management themselves. So that's still, it's, it's a tricky balance, but we believe that we can do more than just give guidelines or uh, provide advice, but we can actually will provide support. So we will become more proactive rather than reactive. And we've always reacted on questions or we advised whenever we needed to, but now we will actually be kind of de detach certain uh, uh, professionals within the National Archive. We will sort of put them within the different ministries to play a pivotal role within this whole big operation of the improvement of information management within the governmental organizations. We also try to be drivers of innovation. We very, thought of, we very often thought of innovation as an important means to give more, give more and better access to our own archives. But actually, those same methods can be used by governments to be more transparent towards citizens or to provide information to parliament. For example, we are working on a privacy enhancing technology together with the National Forensic Institute uh, to sort of automatically um, uh, uh, to automatically eliminate like very personal private information. So uh, in, in, in archives that are um, only partly accessible. And but we, it was very much configured and thought out thought from our perspective, like, okay, this is what we will use on our collection on our archives. But basically that same, that same um, technology can be implemented at different ministries, governmental organizations that they can use it when press are asking questions, when citizens are asking questions, or when parliament is asking questions. And we also believe that we can be, as an archive, because we are, will be more embedded within the organizations, to be a driver of the cultural change among civil servants, 
to basically make clear that what we're doing is not, we're doing it not to make our work easier. Well, maybe, but that's a collateral benefit. In essence, we do this. We, we improve our information management to be, uh, to have more accountability more towards citizens as a government. So not be on the defense about it, but be proactive about it and actually be proud that we can share information with citizens. Of course, this new role has quite a big impact and new position within the information chain in, uh, in The Hague that has quite a big impact on our organization. Not in terms of skills and talents, it's very, what we very often find is that professionals are very much um, used to being at the end of the information chain. So it's quite reactive. People provide good analysis. They have incredible knowledge. But of course, being at the front of the information chain and being really at the start within the organizations, that will cause some friction sometimes because we, what we do as our archives is not what is not the primary focus of, for example, a tax authority or a, minister, uh, a ministry of education. So that's, uh, that these are all things that we need to take account. So we will, it will require new competences within our archives. So now we are thinking of trainings to be more assertive, to actually also change a little bit of attitude that we believe that we can make a change because there, is, there are 30,000 civil servants and there's only 350 people within the National Archives. But with the knowledge that we have, we are actually the experts on information management that can help the professionals within the governmental organizations to change and to improve their information management within, in order to be a more transparent government. So that's basically what, we, what we're trying to become. We're becoming that partner in transparency in The Hague. And then we hope that we can help other archives, these central archives, to become that same partner in transparency to eventually move closer towards citizens as a whole. So this is my uh, talk, and I um, I know this is not it's not been um, very technical, and it's more sort of it comes more from the heart because I do think that as national archives we can we can make a much bigger impact than uh, than what we've done so far in the past. Uh, and I can only speak for the Netherlands, of course, but this is uh, what I wanted to share with you today. And this is work in progress, and I'm sure we will. Um, by later, by this summer, we are uh, working with this. We are working on this with the rest of the organization as well. So this is really nice to see this um, transition in culture within the organization just by talking about it. And a lot of people really embrace, within the organization, embrace this shift. We're not doing, we're not doing things radically different, but we're doing them with a different mindset. And it's, uh, it's worked wonders, and we've had very good, nice feedback so far. So I'll stop sharing my slides so I can actually see a bit more. Oh, you can see me.